I welcome you once again to our discussions on uh, you know financial instruments topic where we are discussing at this point in time the the classification of financial assets and within that we are looking at the conditions where we are able to apply the amortized cost method right friends it is imperative for us to understand that an amortized cost concept brings in consistency to the balance sheet and you know uh, considerable to the pnl at the same time so uh, entities may really be you know kind of keen to understand what kind of financial assets are you know going to be shown or classified as per you know at the amortized cost and accordingly the accounting shall follow okay we have been discussing so far the conditions for the amortized cost model where we said that the first condition is uh, the business model test we will look at uh, recovery of contractual cash flows and the second condition that is that is our focus at this point in time is that these contractual cash flows arising on specified dates which which represent recovery of the principal amount and interest on the principal outstanding okay so our focus at this point in time is to understand what is the meaning of interest okay when i say i'm looking at interest precisely my objective of interest is to my objective of understanding the term interest is to is to talk about it what what does let's say what does interest represent here okay so when i say that i'm talking about what is the what is the representation of interest i'm safe, safely looking at some basic lending arrangement wherein i seek recovery of an amount in addition to the amount lent due to time value of money okay in simple language i give somebody 100 for one year okay i expect the person to pay me let us say 110 dollars right so this extra 10 represents interest right because of the time value of money the value of hundred dollars one year from now is not the same as in today so i should expect some recovery of the amount due to you know the 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 time value of money factor okay so this is this is one basic idea of in, you know interest and and i think we we know it any case right doesn't there's no the problem understanding interest or the meaning there of you know in in this part lens so we don't have to go technical on that we don't have to make it complicated right but then if i say i give you 100 dollars today and you will return 100 dollars which is the principal and Twenty percent of the profits made by you. Okay, so let us say if you made a profit of fifty dollars, my share is ten dollars now again, right? I still receive hundred plus ten, which is hundred ten, right? but now this 110 while it has the principal amount recovery i did not receive interest from you right that is there is one differentiation now all of a sudden you have started looking at it now okay so what we are what we are saying here is this condition solely payment of principal and interest 
suddenly becomes very very complicated for me because I cannot probably recover anything other than principal and interest. I mean, it's not that I cannot, but then if I do so, I cannot use the cost model then, right? That is the implication now. So all of a sudden you start witnessing, okay, well, okay, I don't, I don't only want to recover my principal, but I also want to recover interest. So it's important for me to understand what is the meaning of interest here and interest broadly refers to the time value of money okay so if I say that let's put it like this hundred principal five percent of revenue it is not interest okay you're not you're not getting something you're not you know earning something due to lending part of it okay the, on the principal amount you're earning something on something else right but having said that if i say i'm going to charge you a variable interest rate Right. So, for example, one of the most, uh, you know, uh, acceptable variable rate worldwide is the LIBOR. All right. Uh, in some countries like India, for example, we also have MIBOR. Okay. M-I-B-O-R. We are not worried about that. I am saying it's a variable interest rate. Right. Floating interest rate. And you are charging something over and above on this. Right. Here we are safe to assume. that the variable interest rate reflects the time value of money is it okay are you fine with that okay so we are saying that me as an entity i might be able to borrow at this i'm gonna charge you something more and I would charge you this extra more because of the credit risk part of, let's say, you know, the arrangement. So I'm giving you money. There is a risk of a default. And that's the reason I would want to recover that, you know, recover on that risk further. Okay. So if I, if I look at it, here we have started looking at now that a variable interest rate reflects recovery of money due to the time value as well so this would be an acceptable way of looking at that the, whatever money is coming to me irrespective of the interest rate changing from time to time we'll just use some numbers to obviously understand it better but that would still reflect solely the payments of principal and interest okay let's let's talk about it quickly and see to it what do we connect on this right so let us say that company X gives ten thousand dollars to company Y interest charged is LIBOR plus two percent the interest is reset every six months and the tenure is three years that is after three years you recover your principal amount also all right so if I say that Today, the LIBOR is, let us say, 4%. Six months from now. So, let's, let's use the dates. Okay. So, this is done on, let's say, 1st of 
January 2010. Okay, 13 years is three years, so 31st of December 2000. Uh, you know. Uh, 12 you recover the entire amount so 10 entire 11 entire and 12 entire okay so let's say LIBOR on 1st of January 2010 is this 30th of June since we're talking about six months LIBOR 2010 LIBOR goes to let's say five percent 31st of December 2010, LIBOR now changes to 4.5%. I'm, 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 I'm hopeful that the calculation can be done easily even without the use of a calculator. Let's say 30th of June 11, the rate is 6%. 31st of December 11, the rate is uh, 5.5% 30th of June 12 this goes to again let's say let's say 6.5% okay now this reflects what that the rate that is applicable the applicable it is L plus 2 LIBOR plus 2% which means that this becomes 6% for one year effectively is three percent for the six months okay so that is how somebody should be reading it likewise this is seven percent for one year which means it is 3.5 percent for the six months it is 4.5 percent that is 6.5 percent for one year that is 3.25 percent this becomes eight percent that means four percent for six months Likewise, 7.5%, this becomes 3.75%. And finally, well, it doesn't matter because we're any case talking about the last date. This date, the money will come back. But for the sake of argument, it becomes 8.5%, which is 4.25% for six months. Okay. So what you have started looking at is, The rates are changing and accordingly the interest payments will change as well right so while the the rates are changing this LIBOR plus the premium the 2% extra still reflects the time value of money in a in a more you know uh, in an other than a fixed manner so it, it does not bring any change whatsoever okay so if I say that I'm looking at this kind of an instance my accounting would be quite straightforward here so very clearly i would say on day one first of january 10 debit investment credit bank ten thousand dollars okay right 30th of june 10 i will receive three percent debit bank credit interest income three percent on ten thousand that gives me 300 all right 31st of december 10 now the applicable rate is 3.5 percent the same entry for 350 dollars right 30th of june 11 interest rate goes to 3.25 percent now that means 325 dollars right 31st of december 11 the rate goes to 4 percent which means 400 dollars 30th of june 12 my rate is i'm looking at the right rate so this is 300 followed by 350 and then 325 400 and then i have 375 so this is one two three four five 
no but yeah so this is this is of course until 30th of june now okay let let me just clarify this is the rate of the dates on which interest rate is set for the future period what does it mean it means that if on 1st of january 10 the libor is 4% for the next 6 months the rate that is applicable or that is going to be applicable since the overall interest rate for one year is libor plus 2 this becomes 6% for 6 months it would be 3% for the future period of course likewise on 31st of december 12 there is an interest income of 425 and on the same date i recover my money so debit bank 10000 and credit investment to the extent of 10000 dollars again right quite logical should not be a problem here to understand the concept of interest in this particular regard okay let's take an extension of this just to understand it better as to how do we look at some more complicated scenarios okay so let us say that there is a company company x invests $10000 in company y the arrangement is like this year 1 the interest rate is 5% year 2 the interest rate is 7% and year 3 the interest rate goes to let us say 8% okay now the important thing to understand here we are talking about a, a step up interest payment okay now in these cases also while we obviously would want to solve this in terms of what is the you know the income that you are going to recognize in the books we are saying that briefly even if a step up interest comes in the very definition the very intent of this definition the contractual term this is the term 3 years you're going to pay this interest give rise on specific date so at the end of each year for example receiving this money solely payment of principal and interest on principal outstanding so yes we are not worried about the interest amount at this point in time but whatever is being paid is 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 realizing recovering back my principal amount and interest on that principal outstanding right so here if i say that i look at this kind of investment this would also meet the the condition of solely payments of principal and interest this is also referred to as an sppi test solely payment of principal and interest on the principal outstanding right so how do we do these things how we look at more complicated scenarios is something that we certainly want to talk about in the series of these lectures so do keep watching these lectures and do subscribe to our channel that is abc learning and uh, happy learning good day all the very best thank you and